and specifically her role in this act, were you aware that she was the person that drove the car that boxed in the victim and her son? I understand that she was the driver, that's that. In the stipulations, the driver of the vehicle said, hey, uh, my son is in the car. We all know what the court adjudication is, but sometimes it doesn't mean a do diddly damn anymore. Here it makes a big difference. Sometimes the purpose of sentence is for rehabilitation. Sometimes it's just punishment. Sometimes it's protecting the community. There are a host, a whole host of reasons. But your problem is sometimes when you've done something so horrendous, no matter the changes you've made, sometimes it's just a prison offense. Oh, that's okay. Who's here on Michaela Johnson? All right, is that the person on the Samsung who's not dressed appropriately for court and appears not to have a shirt on? Yeah. All right, so they will not be given a victim impact if that is the person. All right, and then there's someone on by the name of Bachelor Santa Benes. All right, so then Samsung appears to be yours, so that person will not be given a victim impact. Yes, sir. All right. I think everyone should know that you have to have clothes on in court. Well, well, he's at the end of the pal. All right, court is calling 2023 CR 3848, State of Texas versus Michaela Elise Johnson. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. Patrick Hancock for the defendant. All right. And are you Ms. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. All right. We're here for sentencing. You entered a plea of no contest to robbery on December 4th. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of eight years in the prison. The state is opposing your application for community supervision or deferred adjudication. They're taking certain items into consideration. All right. Did uh, you all have a chance to review the PSI report, State? Yes, Joe. Defense? I did, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report, State? No. Defense? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, State, any witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor. Defense, any witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, I do. I have Miss Alicia Franklin, uh, Michaela's mom. All right, Miss Franklin? Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, that nothing but the truth will help you, God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand. Make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. If you okay. can state your name for the record. Alicia Franklin. All right, defense. Ms. Franklin, good morning. Good morning. Um, you and I have spent a lot of time together regarding Michaela, is that correct? Correct. And you are aware that Michaela has accepted responsibility for a robbery here in Burr County? Correct. And today is the day that the judge can either send her to prison or entertain her application for probation or deferred adjudication. Correct. Ms. Franklin, let me just ask you, um, how old is Michaela? As of now, she is 18. When the case started, she was 17. And when did she turn 18? November 3rd. And um, where is she a student at? At Roosevelt High School. She, what grade is she in? She's a senior. And being in Roosevelt High School, has she uh, made future plans, applied to any universities, or done anything at this point in her senior year? Yes, yeah, she was accepted to UTSA and where Penn View. Um, Excuse me. Home. Please whisper. Say it again now. She was accepted to UTSA and we're pending um, the application for Clark Atlanta University. Very good. And how is she doing in school? She's doing good. She's on my honor roll. She, right now she has all A's and um, perfect attendance since she's been out. And did Michaela request a, a, a letter from one of her school counselors to offer to the court today? She did. John, I tendered this to the to the to the state for their review. At some point, you'd like me to look at that, Judge. All right. Any objections to the court reviewing this? No, Judge. All right. You may continue. Miss Franklin, um, 
with regard to that letter, um, is it a positive review of how Michaela's doing at Roosevelt High School right now? It is. Michaela's um right now she's since her release, she's at the best she's ever been. Um, she's focused, she's serious about uh, furthering her future um, for college, and she's on the right path. I'd like to take you back to, I guess, the time around this offense. Um, and before I do that, I want to ask you, um, are you a single mom? I am. Does Michaela have a, a father in her life who's active? or? He's not active, um, not consistently. And do you, does she have any siblings? She does. She has a brother and a sister from her father. And but living in your household is no, just you. no, just me and Michaela. I want to take you back to around the time of the offense. Um, do you remember getting a call that Michaela uh, had been locked up for some very serious offenses? Yes, I do. And can you tell the court what your response was? That she needed to sit there. Um, I left her in there. She needed to understand what she had done and take responsibility. Um, I left her in there for five months before I bonded her out so she could understand that she didn't do anything. You know, it wasn't something small. She needed to understand exactly what she did and what she could look forward to. She didn't know what prison or their county was, what jail was. And do you think those five months had a significant impact in her life? Most definitely. I know for a fact she doesn't want to go back. Um, she definitely has a true meaning of what jail is. And was that your goal at that time? That um, definitely was my goal. Because yeah. I could have bonded her out the same day or the next day. I mean, I could have got the financial means to get her out. So it was definitely my goal for her to learn her lesson. And hopefully we don't ever have to revisit this again, which I don't think we will. I honestly think that she didn't learn her lesson. Miss Miss Franklin, let me ask you, at the time when she was arrested, were there some behavioral problems that there, you picked up on? Yeah, there was, but I thought she was just being a rebellious teenager. I didn't realize she was like depressed and um, had low self-esteem until I she had suicidal thoughts. I took her to Little Ridge, but you know, they let her out and she did a little counseling here and there. So I thought she was just being more rebellious to herself. Um, I honestly didn't know it was mental health issues there. But once I did know, I've gotten her help. What mental health issues have you discovered in your um, Definitely depression, low self-esteem. Um, we've been going through exercises with the counseling sessions. Um, and me, myself, just trying to boost her up and get her on the right path to feel good about herself. And do you think you're on a, a positive path right now? Most definitely we are. She's back living at home? She lives at home. Um, my relationship is really good. She's more open. We actually have conversations about how she's feeling. And I think we're on a really good path. And that's different than <laughs> what it was before the Most open. definitely. She would um, stay to herself more, so lock herself up in her room. Um, you know, just for me, what I thought was normal teenage stuff, but definitely it was a little deeper than that. Ms. Franklin, you own the business. Would you tell the judge what you do for me? I do. I own Sugar Glamour Salon, I own a hair salon in San Antonio. And have you and uh, Michaela talked about uh, her interest in, in working in the salon? Yes. Um, but actually, before this, she did. She was my assistant. And um, to be honest, I need her back as an assistant, but she wants to be a barber. And um, to get her through college, it'll, it'll be something for her to fall back on. And I can, um, I'm also an instructor, so she can get some of her hours through me. You mentioned that she's been accepted to UTSA. Yes, she's Sunday. been accepted to UTSA, but she's also, um, we're pending the application for Clark Atlanta, which she preferably would want to go. And what would be her interest in studying in college? A business marketing. Um. So you left her in jail for five months, and now she's been on pre-trial release as a condition of her bond. Correct. I know we had one GPS uh, circumstance that we had to uh, take up with the court, but yes. 
other than that issue that was straightened out here in the courtroom, do you think she's been compliant with all the rules? Yes, she's been compliant. And I also make sure she's compliant. I mean, we get home on time, way before time. We don't take no shortcuts. So yeah, she's definitely compliant. I know that uh, today we've had the opportunity, the three of us, you, me, and Michaela, to go through the pre-sentence report. You can see there are some pretty raw feelings on the part of the the listed complainant. Yes. Um, can you tell me if you think, um, even before today, um, do you think Michaela recognizes um, just how serious uh, this offense was and the, and the fear that people were placed in and the after effects of that fear? Yes, yeah, she definitely recognizes that. Um, she's definitely um, voiced how remorseful she is for this. Um, I know for Christmas we did, um, she wasn't able to actually go to the battered women's shelter, but she did produce a toy drive so, um, where she marketed it and we received a lot of toys, I think over 500 and took it back to the battered women's shelter. Um, she definitely is remorseful and she definitely understands that she put these people in fear and it's not to be taken lightly. Very good. Could you address very quickly whether you think your daughter would be a good candidate for probation or deferred adjudication in this court? I think she would be a great candidate. I think, um, as a matter of fact, I know she has a bright future. Um, this was something that she got herself into that I know she regrets. And I don't think that she should be sent to jail. She's done five months. And I understand that it's not the same as 10 years, but she definitely recognizes and has had a taste of what jail is to not do this again and not be in any more trouble and to succeed and hopefully help other juveniles and help other people who are going in that direction. Ma'am, that's all the questions I have. The okay. state has an opportunity to ask any questions they yes. want. Yes. Any questions? Were you aware that this offense occurred on February 8th of 2023? Once I got a call from the um, Michaela when she was already in custody. So you knew the date? Yes. And what day was that of the week? Do you remember? I do not. Would it surprise you that it was Wednesday? Um, I I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it, so... it was a Wednesday. Yeah. Would it surprise you that this offense occurred shortly before 1 p.m.? Um, it, the whole thing surprised me. I... Uh, but I'm asking specifically about the time at which the offense occurred. Would that surprise you? Did you know that it happened? I did know. I mean, I've known since my reading the papers and where where should Michaela have been? She should have been at school. So do you know or did Michaela ever talk to you about what happened during this offense? Uh I yes. The, so you were aware that the victims in this case was a mother and her young four-year-old son. Yes, sir. And you had a chance to read the victim impact statement. Yes, sir. And did it shock you that this had a drastic effect on that family? Uh, no, sir. I definitely understand the turpitude of the case. So you understand what the victim's feeling when she's saying that prison would be appropriate here? Um, I don't think it would be appropriate for Michaela uh, and for the simple I'm, fact. I'm going to ask if you could answer my question. Would it surprise you or, or, or does it shock you that the victim in this case is asking for prison? No, sir. Is it understandable? It definitely is understandable. And were you aware that the other two people that participated in this act, that they were both younger than you? Yeah. So she was the oldest one out of the group, right? Okay, yes. So she should have been able to make better decisions than the other two, correct? I don't agree with that. Um, the other two had been in trouble, I understand. And she also was the only girl. So, and specifically her role in this act, were you aware that she was the person that drove the car that boxed in the victim and her son? I understand that she was the driver, yes, sir. Specifically that boxed in the victim and her I, son. I understand. Nothing else to say. All right, any other questions? Uh, Ms. Strength, I, I think I tendered it to the judge as a part of the other letter, but we did take Michaela to be evaluated by Mark Harris. I did. He's a licensed therapist, is that correct? Yes. Judge, if I didn't give you that. Yes, you did. And I, I reviewed it. Okay, it's good. attached to that. Thank you, Judge.
Um, and you had the opportunity to look at his assessment and that's helped you on a path of, of understanding her now, is that correct? Yes, it did. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank excited. you for coming in. All right, defense, call your next witness. Judge, that's it. All right, did your client wish to say anything? Uh, judge, um, I think I'm gonna speak for her. All right, so I wanna let the parties know that part of my question, or maybe you can address this counsel. Yes, ma'am. Because it says that she is minimizing her role. And it says regarding the instant offense, the defendant stated, I have no comment at this, which I understand. Sure. That but then good. she comes back and she does make a comment. And it says the defendant later stated, I feel it needs to be looked into more rather than what they are saying. And, and I think we, we address that actually this morning, Judge. I think her point on that is um, she was charged with the aggravated robbery. She did not possess, hold, or yield a gun. Uh, and so it's been kind of a process of explaining that to her. So I think that was, she's not uh, minimizing her role as far as uh, doing things with those young men. However, I think she's made a distinction that uh, contrary to what the state wants to put forward is that she was not the leader of this. She was a follower in this and she did not uh, possess or hold a gun. Anymore. So I think it's, I think as to Ms. Ballard's point in the, in the PSI, maybe she could have gotten out of the car and said, hey, don't do that. She didn't do it. But the point of the matter is that she was in the car and not actively terrorizing these people. I, I make that distinction, but I also understand that if she was there, that she's a part of it. All right, because I'm reading the PSI. I'm sorry, reading the stipulations. And the stipulations, it says that she was the one who boxed the driver in. Well, Judge, I, you know, we're here taking responsibility mm -hmm. for the facts. So I don't think I don't think she has said that she's not guilty of this offense. I just think she has a different interpretation okay. of her role versus those young men. All right. All right. Anything else from the state? No, no, uh, I was informed by our victim advocates that the uh, witness on Zoom was dressed. It was a it was a brown sweater that she's saying that she was wearing. No, the person who was on Samsung. That wasn't a brown sweater, <laughs> unless I'm colorblind or something's going on. They had on no top. Well, all right, Judge, I just wanted to make sure. Just all right, to thank you. All right. Uh, I, did want to, I don't want to overstep, but I do want to make a brief argument next time. Yes, you may proceed. So Judge, when I first started representing this young lady, she was in jail. And as her mother said, usually, in, usually I'm, I have to feel those questions. How quickly can we get out of jail? I think Ms. Franklin took a, a very brave approach for a single mom, and that is that I want her to sit there. These are serious charges. I want her to get a taste of incarceration. I want her to understand that you have to be penalized or punished for the things that you do. So five months passed by, and so I think that the value in that here in the courtroom today is that she has a taste of incarceration. Um, and I think she's come out of jail, Judge, and, and the letter from the Roosevelt High School from Ms. Howard says she's really doing well in school. Uh, it, it's, it's hard for me to believe she's 17 years old when I, when I met her uh, and charged with such a serious crime. And she's turned 18 and she's only, you know, three months into her 18th year. So you know, Judge, it's one of those things. She's got a bright future. She's got hopefully acceptance into a school in Atlanta. She's been accepted to UTSA. Those letters, in my opinion, Judge, from Roosevelt High School, those are hard letters to get for the defense. And that's a really fine letter that that supports uh, Michaela in her application for probation. I don't want the court to think that she's minimizing this because I, we've spent hours 
talking about, you know, the what ifs and, and, and how you can't find yourself in that situation. Her mom was wide enough through, through uh, some talking that we had to get her sessions with, with Mark Harris. And Mr. Harris is very good through the juvenile probation and, and through uh, private practice of, of bringing these young people in, the young people he specializes in, young offenders, and working with them with this cognitive behavioral, you can't find yourself in the situation. You can't find yourself around the situation. If you do, then you need to leave. You don't need to be boxing anybody in cars. So I, I think this has been put square upon uh, Michaela. I think she's done a great job out on bond. Uh, I think she's doing a great job in school right now. I can tell you that her relationship with her mother is, has never been better. I just really beg this court to give this young woman a chance. Uh, a conviction and being sent to prison would, is going to irreparably change her life. Now, I know that there's victims out there who have had their life irreparably changed too. There's nothing we can do about that. But this is a young lady who's clearly on a positive path. And we'd like for her to stay there with the court's permission. State. Judge, the situation here is that they specifically targeted a mother and a young child. That child's been damaged for the rest of his life. And he's gone through immense trauma. And the role that Ms. Johnson played here was an important one. She boxed them in. She's the reason why they could not get away. I understand that she's made a lot of progress after the fact, but in that moment, she could have made different choices. Choices is what you're going to have to make going forward. It, it's something that the state feels that prison would be appropriate here. The victims feel that prison would be appropriate here. That's what we're asking for. Judge, I, I just want to, you see more of these PSIs than I do, but it looks like the juvenile offenders who I think uh, have the most serious role in this. I can't read this correctly, but it looks like one of them had his cases dismissed, uh, maybe placed on probation. Mm -hmm. And then one was sent to um, some kind of TYC placement. Um, so I, I guess if I look at that judge, I just argue that there will be some kind of equitable uh, position here by the court to figure out what to do with Michaela. Um, again, judge deferred adjudication on second degree felony is a is a quite a, a good thing. I mean, we all know what deferred adjudication is, but sometimes it doesn't mean a do diddly damn in court. Here it makes a big difference because um, it gives her a chance to prove herself and it gives the court a long leash to make sure that she's doing well. I, I don't know what else we could bring the court to show that she's remorseful, doing well at home, doing well on her conditions of bottom. So again, we would ask that the court wisely place her on deferred adjudication. Understand that she's done five hard months in the, in the Bear County Jail. I think she spoke about her fear of the jail with Mark Harris in that letter. I think her mom made a good decision and, and we're we're hoping that that will, will sway the court and giving her a chance at a future without being another young black female with a conviction on her. Here's the court's problem. And what I think people need to look at. Sometimes punishment, and, and all attorneys will tell you, when we're in law school, they, they tell you about the purposes of sentencing. Sometimes the purpose of sentence is for rehabilitation. Sometimes it's just punishment. Sometimes it's protecting the community. There are a host, whole host of reasons. But your problem is sometimes when you've done something that is considered so horrendous, right? No matter the changes you've made, sometimes it's just a prison offense. There are a lot of people who do things that I'm sure if they could go back in time, they would have changed it. They would have said, I wouldn't have done it. But the boxing of someone in with your vehicle 
And I read the P, uh, the PSI report and I read the stipulations In the stipulations, the driver of the vehicle said, Hey, uh, my son is in the car. And that didn't give anybody pause. I would think that there are certain things that should give people pause. For example, if somebody holds somebody at gunpoint and they want to steal their vehicle, they would say, oh my gosh, shucks, I didn't know there was a child in this car. Let me pause. But they gave nobody pause. Everybody just still continued with what they were going to do. That's a problem for the court. So this is what the court- isn't, isn't the problem that she was, no matter what her role was, it was still going to be something that was horrendous because it, it's a robbery. Yeah. So under, and I'm not trying to argue with the court, but mm -hmm. under that circumstance, then, then no one should be uh, eligible for deferred adjudication. Well, there, are, I mean, counsel, as you're aware, there are different types of robbery. And there are some robberies that don't involve a child state. Your Honor, so right through one thing I did notice in the letter uh, from the psychiatrist, something that is bothered me, I've seen it somewhere in here, is that Ms. Johnson, she said she gave them a ride but did not know their intentions, but she played a role in boxing the men. She says that she had never had or handled a gun that night. When the police lit up her car, the boys threatened her if she didn't keep going. One of the boys threatened to shoot her if she stopped. Nowhere is that brought up in the report that she had mentioned that that she had said that they had threatened her. So that's just something that is... Well, I don't think it's... I mean, it's it's her feeling, so it's not going to be in a police report. Right, but but I can tell you that was her feeling on this. She did feel threatened by these two young uh, juvenile offenders. But we're here today to take responsibility and not make excuses. So that's, that's our answer to that, Judge. All right. This is, is there anything else before the court makes its ruling? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, this is what the court is going to do. Court is going to find you guilty, taking consideration 2023 CR 3850, 2023 CR 3849, grand jury number 806632. There's to be restitution of $110 to John Bright in grand jury number 806632. Give you credit for any time served. I'm going to retain jurisdiction. Your attorney will tell you what that means. And I'm going to sentence you to six years in the prison. Did you review what it's entitled trial court certification with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, because you waive your right to appeal. You do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Okay. And Mr. Hancock, you can explain to her what that means. I will, Judge. All right.